are much more than just huge bridges. They are technological benchmarks, manifestos of their time, the most spectacular bridges on Earth, allowing travel on four wheels. Hundreds of thousands of cars, huge rumbling trucks weighing tons, roll over them on a daily basis. The constant traffic makes them maintenance monsters. Even though it's very big, it has a lot of intricate details that have to be maintained. These bridges have to endure jolts daily. They stand in extreme locations and have to be serviced under the toughest circumstances. You have to hold on tight. The wind blows up to 60 kilometers an hour. The huge challenge begins with the construction. They're crazy, they'll collapse. A multi-million dollar game that often drives the construction workers and engineers to the verge of bankruptcies and madness. Everybody was pessimistic. The gigantic structures break boundaries, but at a price, human lives. But when it's completed, and the first cars drive across the bridge, suddenly, it's only magic and pride. To me, it will be uh, uh, the most beautiful bridge in the world. Huge constructions, roads sweeping across them, the secrets behind the gigantic architectural wonders and their daily maintenance challenge. Gigantic constructions, the most spectacular bridges in the world. Majestic, gigantic, iconic, no matter the superlative, it is justified. But without a few key milestones in the history of bridge building, these constructions would be completely unthinkable. The first wave of innovation takes place in the 1930s. For the first time, people need bridges for heavy automobiles. In the 60s and 70s, the bridge builders ignite the next stages of development. No wonder, as car travel goes through the roof worldwide, with more new cars on the road than ever before. Further huge waves of innovation in bridge building construction make it possible to build ever higher, sturdier and larger. Our first milestone on the road to gigantic monster bridges, the Europa Bridge in the Austrian Alps. At its completion, the Europa Bridge is the highest on the continent, boasting the tallest pillars in the world. The Europa Bridge is located north of Innsbruck in Austria. Thirteen million vehicles cross the highway bridge every year, two million of which are heavy trucks. Weighing up to 38 tons, they cause continuous stress for the bridge. The Europa Bridge is the heart of the Brenner Highway, the main north-south transit route in Europe via the Alps. 190 meters above the Vip Valley, the bridge has spanned the valley for over 50 years now. Prior to construction, the only way to reach the Brenner Pass was a small road, one lane each way, one winding road after another. Today, the journey takes you over five gigantic reinforced concrete pillars. The bridge core is a steel box girder. It supports the roadway and is regularly checked for damage. With spans of up to 200 meters, the slightest material fatigue can lead to disaster. The bridge must undergo regular maintenance. Because of high traffic, the strain is enormous. 
Another problem is that the bridge is located in a strong wind stream. The fall wind comes from the mountains and can reach speeds of up to 150 kilometers per hour. Hurricane strength. It is windy today and important maintenance has to be scheduled. Bridge inspector Peter Augschel and his colleague Dominic Leitner want to venture out over the parapet using this machine. Due to the strong winds, it is questionable if a check will be possible. Because we're located in a Chinook wind swat, it often happens that we have to postpone maintenance works or sometimes even have to cancel them. If the wind is too strong, the risk of an accident is too high. The bridge inspection device is still in the slipstream, at the head of the bridge. But to carry out inspections, the device has to move much further out over the gorge. Peter and Dominic get a better picture of the current conditions at the first concrete pillar. No wind here right now. It's misleading though because you can hear it but not feel it. Out there it's a different story. Since the last inspection, the weather conditions have taken its toll on the concrete. Dominic Leitner and Peter Augschel want to know the condition of the steel box girder. Provided the wind plays ball. The two inspectors take a chance and walk to the middle of the bridge. The wind is a lot stronger here, typical of the treacherous Alpine region. You have to hold on as wind gusts up to 60 kilometers an hour out here. Device-wise, it's tricky. Some functions don't work at all at high wind speeds. We're restricted or we have to abort. Not a chance. The winds are too strong. No inspection possible today. But due to the constant strain, regular inspections to the underside of the roadways are imperative. Strong gusty winds, extreme traffic and heavy vehicles. The bridge is more than 50 years old. Martin Kirschmeier, the current Europa Bridge Chief Inspector, sees the bridge as a small wonder of the world. We have here in Viptal southerly wind gusts of up to 150 kilometers per hour, causing strong vibrations on the entire construction, making it all the more fascinating for us to think how our peers from decades ago managed to deal with such complex construction, but with much more modest technical capabilities. The almost 150 meter high concrete piers are hollow inside, like the hollow steel box girder. Everything is extremely streamlined. The bridge is one of the first structures where tests were carried out in the wind tunnel in order to avoid excessive vibrations and overloads, allowing the Europa Bridge to withstand at least 10 times more traffic than back when it was completed. We got lucky because in the 1960s the calculation methods were not as precise as they are now. So the engineers had to add some reserve here and there. That has really helped us today. When construction began in 1959, concrete pillars of that height had never been erected before. And of all places, in an alpine region. Definitely a monumental task. Working conditions, strong winds, intense cold, all at extreme heights. Danger is omnipresent. 22 people die before a single car rolls over the motorway. Two weeks after the failed mission, Today, the men want to go at it again, give it another try, assuming the weather is favorable. Like every inspection here, the bridge remains open, traffic flows. Closing the bridge for any amount of time, unthinkable. For the inspection, only the right lane is closed. The men maneuver the bridge inspection device into position. Whether the inspectors can check the road base today will only become clear once they have positioned the device in the middle of the bridge.
It had to be postponed several times over the past few days due to high winds. Dominic and Peter are optimistic for today. Ten kilometers an hour. Ten kilometers an hour. We measure ten kilometers an hour. In our business, that's practically wind still. Today we can use our device. Finally, ready to go. 190 meters above the valley floor. Hi there. It's looking pretty good with the wind today. It's not that bad. You get used to the heights. Peter and Dominic descend to one of the most spectacular work environments in all of Europe. Fear of heights is not recommended. The inspector's task, to document damage and schedule repairs. Martin, Martin can you back up a bit? The box girder was widened 30 years ago, a spot where corrosion easily happens. Between 3.22 and 3.20. Peter Augschel marks the exact location of each spot of corrosion. The damage pattern looks pretty much the same everywhere. The exterior main girder is affected mainly. Rust everywhere on the main girder. Cause for concern? No, we're not really worried. Because we observe it constantly and do regular maintenance work, so we can always guarantee the bridge is in good condition. The result of the main inspection, except for the corrosion, no further damage to the box girder of the Europa Bridge. And so, the future of one of the main arteries in Europe remain secure. Another spectacular bridge. The extraordinary structure is located nearby, in Switzerland. In the late 70s, bridge designers worldwide ignite the next stage of evolution. Away from pure functionality towards a more exciting design. The Ganter Bridge in the Swiss canton of Valais is probably the most impressive example. Undoubtedly one of the most spectacular car bridges in the world, spanning the Gantertal, surrounded by 4,000 meter high mountains. The Ganter Bridge is part of the Zimplon Pass Road in southern Switzerland. Before the construction of the bridge, traffic wound its way along the rugged mountains. Falling rocks a constant danger, resulting in many fatal accidents. The old bridge had served its time. Since 1980, traffic goes over the Ganter Bridge. Because of the mountainous terrain, countless bridges span the Swiss valleys. But the Ganter Bridge puts them all to shame. A complete overhaul of the bridge takes place every five years. Civil engineer Thomas Verlin and his colleague Pierluigi Zariani know the bridge well and know what to look for. First, it goes to the heart of the construction, to the inside of the bridge in the section beneath the surface of the road. Thomas and Pierluigi penetrate to the inside of the reinforced concrete box girder, to a spot that they noticed during the last inspection five years ago. The steel reinforcement within the concrete is susceptible to corrosion. The inspectors want to ensure that no risk exists for the construction, since maximum safety is imperative. It hasn't gotten worse. 
there hasn't been more leakage, so the rust has not spread. Thomas Verlin is relieved. Only 10 years ago, the bridge was completely overhauled and renovated. As far as Thomas is concerned, this bridge is more than just a connection from A to B. The bridge is a bit of an accolade in the civil engineering profession. And if you are part of the project, involved, you're proud. These inspections are like an interactive visit to a museum, part of historical technology. You can see what is possible, what you can achieve. Construction work begins in 1976. The major challenge for the designers, the pillars, which are north of the valley. Because here the slope is not stable. On the contrary, it is slowly moving downward. Nevertheless, the pillars are supposed to permanently support 18,500 cubic meters of concrete and 2,000 tons of steel on a permanent basis. The architect is faced with a problem. How can he anchor these gigantic, almost 100 meter high pillars on a moving slope? Regardless, Professor Christian Men accepts the challenge. He is the most famous bridge builder in Switzerland. With the Ganter Bridge, he wants to create his masterpiece. The geology is in fact very important for the Ganter Bridge. On one side, you've got rocks and cliffs. On the other side, the so-called scree, which are moraines. Very fine material that creeps, so you can't build the foundation there. Men overlays the pillars in specially designed shafts that co-migrate with the slope. The pillars themselves remain on neoprene bearings, which rarely have to be readjusted on the sliding slope. The superstructure of the S-shaped road is reinforced with cast cable pulleys, a flexible anchor bearing rigid superstructure, an ingenious combination. If the whole thing needs to be moved, then the superstructure and the carrier should be relatively stiff. In a cable stayed bridge with fine girders, that is just not that stiff. And these stiffeners are used as well. The foundations are wider than the pillar and allow slope movements of up to 60 centimeters. Inspection of the bearings on which the pillars rest, one of the most important steps of the inspection. Here. Really, here you have two movements. You see that now. Right now, we are 17 centimeters from the zero position and 15 in this direction. In 1980, that was considered a sensational achievement. But the foundations are exposed to the extreme weather. Thomas and Pierluigi encounter damage which is considerably larger than in the bridge interior. Strong flaking. Now we have further spalling of the concrete, some two centimeters. The coverage can no longer be guaranteed, at least not in its entirety. And here at 1500 meters, there is ice, snow, and salt. And if we wouldn't do this, if we just wait for damage to happen, it gets more expensive and sometimes even irreparable. The special foundations are the backbone of the Ganter Bridge. They carry the main net burden and volume of traffic since its opening in 1980. The life expectancy of the structure depends on many factors. High up in the Alps, weather is a problem. That happens quite often. In some places, the outer layer is damaged, which protects the concrete from the road salt used against ice accumulation on the bridge. These sections definitely have to be repaired. On the concrete cladding of the stabilizing harness, the expensive protective layer was left out. Is that going to backfire? 
They are in the same condition as five years ago. The cracking is the same. As you can see, we have the surface covered in fine cracks, like a net. They were visible at the last inspection. After two days of inspection, Thomas Verlin gets a first impression of the condition of Ganter Bridge. The bridge is actually in very good condition. We have normal wear and tear. Through the inspection system every five years, damages can be detected in time and repaired. That way, we can catch problems before more serious damage can occur. It would be negligent if you don't do anything for 30 years and then check if everything is still okay. The Ganter Bridge, an outstanding example of architecture, a monument to Swiss engineering. Nowhere has a balance between function and form been found and so impressively realized as at the beginning of the 1980s. Later, bridge designers overseas pushed the envelope to reach new limits as well. The Sunshine Skyway Bridge in Florida represents new cable stay design and is the longest bridge in the Western Hemisphere. The Sunshine Skyway Bridge is located in the Gulf of Mexico on Florida's west coast. The Sunshine Skyway spans the Tampa Bay in Florida from St. Petersburg to Terracilla. Its signature bright yellow represents the Sunshine State. Six a.m. The first crew makes its way to the bridge for inspection. Due to its exposed position, surrounded by salt water, strong winds, and high air temperatures, several crews are engaged on a daily basis in the maintenance of the gigantic bridge. The crew here focuses on the inspection and maintenance of the bridge pillars. At the same time, there is also a lot of work to be done on the bridge. Tenel Mullins and Jeff Blair discuss final details for today's inspection on top of the Sunshine Skyway. Then, they are on their way. Their maintenance assignment takes them to the middle of the cable-stayed concrete bridge on the four-lane highway. Between St. Petersburg and Terracilla, more than 50,000 vehicles cross the bridge each day. Tenel Mullins has been working for years together with his boys, making sure the bridge withstands the fatigue that comes with high-volume traffic. We have a 24-7 response uh, to emergencies and accidents and those type of things. Long days, so to speak, or long nights for that matter. Every day is a new day, every day is a new challenge. Tenel and his crew service the bridge daily, a necessity to keep the Sunshine Skyway Bridge safe, which is in the open sea and therefore in salty air. You know, we have to basically run across traffic in order to access anything. Uh, in the median or access the, uh, to get down inside the bridge. Working as a team gives everyone a good feeling because they look out for each other. The job is dangerous. Despite a speed limit of 65 miles per hour, traffic on the bridge is unpredictable. Maneuverability is limited on the bridge because you've got the ocean on either side. You've always got to be careful, I mean. It's scary if, if, if you're watching what you're doing. You always have to watch out and get a, a big head start on it. To get to the stay cables, the workers must find a gap in the middle of rush hour traffic on the highway. And that may take time. One of the main problems of the Sunshine Skyway, corrosion of the steel in the precast concrete segmental columns. Tennell and his crew have repeatedly renovated, reinforced and replaced parts.
A bridge this size has a lot of, even though it's very big, it has a lot of intricate details that have to be maintained and watched after. The bridge is constantly being serviced by the crew, an imperative requirement due to the salty air. But that is not the only danger in the Gulf of Mexico. A cautionary tale. The previous bridge, which stood in almost the same spot, was rammed by a ship in 1980. 366 meters of the bridge crash into the sea, along with six cars and a Greyhound bus. Thirty-five people drowned in the bay. Only the respective end segments of the old bridge are left, vigils of the past. The new Sunshine Skyway Bridge is completed only seven years after the accident. The two main pillars upon which the pylons rest are protected by round man-made islands called dolphins. The current bridge engineer, James Jacobson, has learned from past shortcomings. We wanted to make sure that this would never happen again. So the new bridge was built with much stronger uh, pier protection, uh, these islands surrounding it that will protect the, sh the bridge from being hit in the future by any other ships. In addition, the main pilings are surrounded by rock islands with large boulders that would stop a ship from ever being able to hit the, uh, the main columns again. The cable state design allows wider ship's passage and a better redistribution of forces, even in heavy seas, strong winds and hurricanes. The bridge won't be hit directly because of the small islands which are made of coarse gravel, covered with a steel protective layer, and extend into the seabed of the Tampa Bay to protect the pillars from all sides. Many workers working in harsh conditions, uh, below the water level, in these caissons that were driven deep into the bay bottom, and then as the bridge was brought up, they were working high above the bay uh, you know, adding these pieces together until it finally connected in the middle and then the bridge was complete. Safety during the construction of the new bridge has top priority. The choice of design demonstrates this. It is constructed of concrete and steel cables running along the center line of the bridge, supporting the main span. It was designed by the Fig and Muller Engineering Group and built by the American Bridge Company. Thanks to the round shape of the protective islands, the initial impact of a ship collision can be dealt with, but also the direction of the vessel is changed. It bounces off the side and thus the impact to the island is reduced. In addition, 40 small offshore islands protect the bridge against direct collisions. According to the engineers, the bridge can now withstand a collision with an 87,000-ton ship. Regardless of new innovations, the Sunshine Skyway Bridge must be serviced daily to be able to survive the rough Gulf of Mexico. Tenel Mullin and his crew know that theirs is a never-ending job, but he loves it. The reason I like working on a bridge like this and, and the role that I have uh, as, a, as a, a maintenance guy, um, it allows you to uh, work out almost in nature. I mean, you're on top of the uh, Tampa Bay world, so to speak, right here. An exciting day with maintenance above and below, one of the most spectacular bridges in the world comes to an end. Another exceptional sea bridge requiring high maintenance can be found in Northern Europe. It is Europe's longest bridge. We're not just saying that, because this bridge is really long, incredibly long, long enough to connect two countries. The 
Øresund Bridge connects the Danish capital Copenhagen with Malmö in Sweden. The Øresund Bridge is one of the largest infrastructure projects in Europe. Its construction at sea only works thanks to a mega construction site that brings engineers and technology to their limits. Seven a.m. Service start for Christian Normand, the technical director of the bridge. His shift nearly always starts in the monitoring center. Hi, Christian. Hi, Martin. Welcome. Thank. Yes, yes. And it's now. Okay. No bridge has such an extensive monitoring system as the Urizen Bridge, and for a good reason. The Urizen Bridge is a combined road and railway bridge subject to rigorous deformation criteria. Traffic loads and weather information must be constantly measured and evaluated in order to identify potential hazards, such as this traffic collision early on. The Urizen Bridge is the longest cable-stayed bridge in the world, which carries both four traffic lanes and two railroad tracks. A total of 30,000 sensors and 256 cameras not only collect data on traffic and weather, but also take measurements prior to the vibration effects of the stay cables. The nearby Danish airport also requires the highest safety standards. Christian Norman scans the entire system and gets a disturbing warning. A sensor in one of the tunnels leading to the bridge reports an error. If the whole system is not working, we cannot uh, hold the temperature down in the portal building. And if the temperature is going to rise, uh, the electrical systems could overheat and there will be much uh, bigger problem afterwards. The worst problem uh, would be that something had happened with the ventilator. Christian immediately makes his way to the site. On a day like today, the maintenance team is already on alert. During bad weather, the tunnel managers monitor the situation around the bridge very carefully. If the wind picks up and develops into a strong storm, it may even be the case that they have to temporarily close the bridge. Christian has arrived at the well-secured electronic heart of the Urizen Bridge. The entire electrical engineering system comes together here one of the main components of the 1 billion euro construction project. The Urizen Bridge is one of the most monitored bridges in the world. Countless kilometers of cables and wires run together underground. Pinpointing the cause for concern is often like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Now I have to find out if we have a signal here. The signal set is open. So I have to try to adjust it a little bit. This time Christian finds the error in the cooling and ventilation system of the tunnel unusually fast. Off signal. And now we have the signal on. It means that we have one fault less, yeah. The Urizen Bridge. The gigantic construction now makes it possible to drive overland from continental Europe to Scandinavia and vice versa. Every day, 19,000 vehicles and 200 trains use the bridge. But until then, it is a long and difficult road at the start of construction in 1995. In the middle of the sea, a four kilometer long artificial island is built. One of the bridge ends will finish there so that the approach path of the Copenhagen airport is not disturbed by bridge elements. Construction manager Lars Pedersen has struggled from the outset with a lot of resistance. When we started, everybody was pessimistic. People were concerned about the economy. People were concerned about the, the, the time schedule and the environment, but it showed out that the ugly darkling became a, a beautiful swan uh, in all regards. The strategy of Lars Pedersen and his colleagues to finish 90% on land and then transport it by floating cranes out to sea rather than assemble it on site. The plan works and the project manages to keep within the set time frame. There was 
was a, a lot of protests also during the construction, but uh, it showed out that there were solutions to things. To me, the Ørsund Bridge uh, means something very special, and to me it will be uh, uh, the most beautiful bridge in the world. The over 7.8 kilometer long bridge spanning the Øresund Sea between Sweden and Denmark is a maintenance monster. Christian, here at TC, come. Morning light We have a problem on the northwest pylon with the aircraft warning lights. So we have to make a quick stop and go up to see what the problem is because it's not flashing. It has to work 24-7. Øresen Bridge is only five kilometers away from Copenhagen Airport, and air traffic cannot be compromised under any circumstances. This is also the reason why one end of the bridge disappears into a tunnel. But the current problem is not underwater. 200 meters above the strait, the main pylon's aircraft warning light in the approach path to Copenhagen Airport is out. Christian takes the elevator inside the pylons to the highest point of the bridge. Normally, not only the left and center warning lights must flash, but also the right one. It's obviously defective. The problem is pinpointed. A protective control has temporarily shut down the light. Christian has the problem under control in no time. Yeah, beautiful, now it works again. And, while one is up here, why not take a few minutes to enjoy the breathtaking scenery? It has been that since I've been starting working here. It is so great and so big and everything, everybody that's out here that works here are great people. So it's uh, the best job I can get. The bridge between Copenhagen and Malmö one of the most important connections in Northern Europe and one of the most spectacular bridges in the world. But the latest milestone in road bridges is in Western Europe. Another cable state structure, but one like no other on the planet. It has the highest bridge pier worldwide and an incredible length of almost 2.5 kilometers. With its construction, Records are broken. Daily maintenance is an adventure every time. The Mio Viaduct changes the map of Europe and currently represents the pinnacle in road bridge construction. The Mio Viaduct is located in the south of France. The Mio Viaduct in France, a bridge of superlatives. It has been built to withstand hurricanes and earthquakes. It represents a benchmark in cable state construction. Seven pylons elevate the highway of the viaduct to a height of up to 245 meters over the valley, as tall as a skyscraper, built in stages. The pylons of steel reduce the overall load, making it possible for a minimum of stay cables that distribute the bridge load over 14 fields. Its gigantic and to the finest detail sophisticated design combines centuries of bridge building expertise. With its spectacular dimensions, the Milieu Viaduct demands everything from its engineers. 
For 12 years, the French argue about the optimal solution in terms of aesthetics and feasibility. The A75, the shortest route between Paris and Barcelona, one of the main arteries of Europe. The most spectacular part of the highway runs through the Tarn Valley. Life before the viaduct meant winding roads and hairpin turns through the valley, slow moving traffic and frequent traffic jams, often a journey of up to two hours. The solution, the Mio Viaduct, a road leading you through the air. Crossing the valley takes 10 minutes now by car. In 2004, the bridge is finally completed, a milestone in bridge construction. Every pylon is supported by a total of 22 struts or stays, 11 on each side. Inside the stay, there are steel cables. The tallest pylon measures 343 meters from the ground to the top. The Eiffel Tower easily fits underneath the spectacular construction. High pylons, wide spans. Not only is the construction ambitious, so is regular maintenance. Seven a.m. Maintenance supervisor Thierry Vaizat and his team start the working day. They are preparing for a mission at maximum height. There are problems with the illumination of the bridge. Can you come, please? We have a problem on top of P2. An aircraft warning light has to be replaced. As luck would have it, the defective light is at the top of the highest pylon. So, have you got everything we need? A light replacement? The tools? We have to go up P2. There's a problem with the light. We have to replace it. Okay, up we go. Thierry will personally replace the light on the highest of the seven pylons. Access to the pylon is directly under the road surface. While traffic rolls over the asphalt above, the engineers make their way under the highway to the pylon. A long way to go, especially when the two of them still have to climb almost 100 meters up to the top of the pylon. So here, we've got to go up pylon number two. That is physically very strenuous. After all, it is 87 meters up there. The long and difficult ascent begins. 87 meters, and only by ladder. The men climb up in pairs, in case of an accident. Each pile is hexagonal and extends below the bridge deck 90 meters. In the upper part, it branches out into two pillars. The form repeats itself upside down over the road, up to the cutoff point. The problem here, when night falls and darkness descends, danger looms. The airport Rodet Marchiac is only 60 kilometers away from the bridge. Aircraft taking off and landing have to be able to see the viaduct is why aircraft warning lights are set at the top of the pylons. Should these lights fail, it could be disastrous for the aircraft. To make sure this doesn't happen, the bridge's permanent maintenance team regularly replace these bulbs. They don't wait until they actually fail, but monitor the bulb's service life and replace them before they go out. Thierry and his colleagues have been fighting their way up the pylon for half an hour. And today, it just happens that the warning light on P2, the tallest pylon, has to be replaced. Reaching the top, Thierry must venture out into the open, a small platform at a dizzying height of 343 meters up in the air. Here is the aircraft warning light. 
the bulb must be replaced by the two engineers. But first, the great view compensates for all that climbing. Climbing to the top of the pylon still always produces a special feeling. There's this incredible view. Now begins the trickiest part of the job for Thierry and his colleague. At 343 meters, every move must be precise. The tiniest mistake could be fatal. Whatever falls from up here lands on the highway like a speeding bullet. We are always very focused when we work. We have to be extremely careful that nothing slips out of our grasp and falls. Up on the platform on bad days, there can be wind speeds of up to 200 kilometers per hour. And if a bulb is defective, the men have to climb up there regardless. Constructing the bridge is a huge challenge. Bridge manager Emmanuel Cachon remembers that deadline pressure is a major factor. We had three years to build the bridge. We pushed the traffic lanes together from both sides. That was very complex and time-consuming and involved using special GPS systems for the very first time in bridge building. The challenge, pushing the roadway onto the pylons from both sides of the valley. Meter for meter, hydraulic systems guided both ends onto each other. And all that at a height of up to 245 meters. The traffic lanes were partially undulated. Those unfamiliar with the work saw that and said, they're crazy, that'll collapse. 500 men working around the clock for three years, managing to raise 21,000 tons of steel and 206,000 tons of concrete stretching through the air. December the 14th, 2004. It is complete, an historic day. But work on the bridge is never ending. Every day, a four-man maintenance team is in action. On the highest bridge pylon in the world, Thierry and his colleague have worked their way to the heart of the aircraft warning light device. The bulb can now be replaced. The view makes up for the stress. When the job's done, it's great to have this amazing view. That makes up for some of the effort, doesn't it, Francois? Yes, the ascent is always pretty difficult, but when you're up there, it's simply beautiful. The end of a successful working day in what must be one of the most spectacular workplaces ever. On top of the tallest bridge pylon on the Mio Viaduct, one of the most spectacular bridges in the world.